Hello, everybody. This is CB with your business reality. And today I have an amazing woman, Cheryl Peterman, who is a the founder and CEO of Nourishment Vitality. She's also an author, an international speaker, and a world Women Conference and Awards chapter leader in Israel, all the way from Israel. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Cheryl Peterman. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Hi. Hi, Crystal. Thank you for such a lovely introduction and for your enthusiasm. It's so great to be here with you this this evening, my evening, your day, and uh, fantastic to to be invited to your show. So thank you. As uh, as you mentioned, I'm connecting with you here from Israel, and I'm always so grateful for today's technology that just allows us the opportunity to speak, share experiences and expertise and to be able to help people from all over the world. Absolutely, and we can say that's definitely the beauty about, in a way, technology is being able to connect with one another all around the world, right? Being able to tell our stories about not just ourselves, but our businesses and our community, and that's the beautiful part of it. But before we continue, let's get started with my intro. <laughs> Hey, and we are back with Cheryl Peterman. She's the CEO of Nourishment Vitality. So, Cheryl, what is Nourishment Vitality? How did you get started with that business in general? Well, Nourishment Vitality Crystal is a health and wellness platform. It's a 360 solution for stress, for fatigue, for holistic weight management. These are some very important issues that are representative of some of the most common health and wellness challenges of our times that we're experiencing today. And we achieve these um, goals of helping people overcome these issues, whether it's with stress, whether it's with fatigue, whether it's with uh, their weight management, through our wide range of innovative online wellness focused programs that are pretty much easy to implement step by step and verified by the best of mind science correct nutrition and psychology practices and we also um, do have personalized coaching corporate workshops and of course as i mentioned our online courses beautiful so you do anywhere from personal to corporate which is at the end of the day it is um align and it is connected right as an owner or ceo or even a management vp whatever your position may be at the end of the day you're a representation of the company so if your mind and your body are not connected or not not doing well then that company is going to have a little bit of a harder time overall as well so um during this time to can you tell us some examples of what you are seeing with um, in the corporate world as far as you know I noticed you also do stress relieving uh, workshops and on all that great process I think it will be a fantastic thing for people to understand how important um, you know it is to not only be connected with your mind and body but to understand your level of stress oh absolutely it's so important we we are not often aware as human beings of our stress levels or even of our stress triggers and how they are subconsciously stacking up during our day, during our work day. And that's why at the end of the day, our focus and our clarity can become clouded because of lack of awareness. Now, you mentioned that there is an alignment between um, all the different peoples, all, people all the way to uh, corporate culture. Absolutely. At Nourishment Vitality, we actually help all people from teens who may be struggling with body image or social pressures, adults who are looking to eliminate the stress, the fatigue, the weight challenges, all the way through to the CEOs of companies who are looking to incorporate that psychology, so important, the psychology, as you mentioned, of wellness into their corporate culture. And Nourishment Vitality is here to help all of these people so that they can perform at their peak potential, optimize their performance and ultimately their end results. And, uh, you know, we know that in today's unprecedented times of this chaos and this uncertainty because of the pandemic, we are walking around facing the threat of an invisible enemy. And at the same time, we are also experiencing this epidemic of stress-related health concerns. That's why it's so important to bring awareness 
into stress, into how it's affecting our body, our mind, and ultimately our performance, our efficiency. And this, what we are seeing is that there are so many unhealthy habits and behaviors that are being triggered or re-triggered during this time of isolation, during this time of the pandemic. And this includes um, things like overeating or binge eating or even um, an, an unhealthy work-life balance. And with the many health service providers, both public and private, in overwhelm at the moment, it's most certainly time for us as individuals, for uh, CEOs of companies to take some level of responsibility and start to empower ourselves, our teams, through education, through knowledge on how to take better care of our own health and of our own well-being. Absolutely. And, you know, right now, everybody's eating their feelings, right? They don't, it, it, like you said, it's an unprecedented time. So a lot of people may not know where to go or what resources there are out there for them. I mean, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty at the moment. And so what would be some ways to be able to turn that into something uh, positive where they can keep moving forward instead, instead of being stuck and, and being, you know, in that moment of eating their feelings with their stress? And, you know, what are some things that people can do in order to, to keep moving forward? To keep moving forward from a self-sabotaging cycle that at the end of the day isn't serving themselves in, 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 a, in a way both personally or professionally Absolutely. and most definitely not, not in business. And I think at the end of the day, people need to realize that our health and our well-being is what is going to take us to hit that next level of success or of um, even a personal um, victory in some way or other. And if we don't take care of that, we are going to actually be hitting a wall, depleting our energy, depleting our efficiency. So we need to be, to be able to take care of that. Otherwise, ultimately, we are leaving money on the table. And so many people do not prioritize their health and their well-being as a necessity in moving themselves forward, moving their business forward, performing better. Yet it is actually crucial. And we know businesses around the world right now are collectively confronting what feels like this real time of uncertainty for us all. And uh, this period has most certainly changed the way that we interact, that we do business together. It's changed the way that we purchase services, that we purchase goods. So transforming mindsets becomes a new challenge to transform mindset into a mindset of success becomes a new challenge. And with so much change and so many more people working from home right now, I think that it's time to take work-life balance very seriously. That mind-body connection, it's very important to find that balance because we need, at the end of the day, to adapt to this new reality of what is going on in our lives with all this chaos and confusion and to keep ourselves in balance both mentally and physically and be very intentional in developing healthy habits and taking some level of responsibility for our own self-care that is going to increase both our personal and work well-being and productivity. Absolutely and I mean you you said you said it in a day right it's it's a choice to, to be able to make that change, is it is a choice. Um, you know, it's okay and, and it's normal to go through some of the feelings, right? Um, you know, grieving. Some people have lost a lot of people around them this year, right? Absolutely. Uh -oh. I myself uh, lost my dad to COVID um, five months ago. And most certainly there is very real loss. There is a a lot of grieving that's going on and there has been a lot of real pain that people are going through. And I always say that, and again, it comes back to being aware of how stress is affecting you and the way that you're actually showing up. But it's really important to not ignore the stress, to not suppress the stress, to not pretend that it's not there, but rather I, I like to, um, to say to lean in 
towards where you're at with a kindness, with a compassion, and to validate your emotions. Your emotions are real, whatever it is that you're feeling. And during a time that we're going through, a lot of people have their emotional metabolism out of whack and our emotions are all over the show right now. And it makes perfect sense considering what's going on at the end of the day. That's why with the people trying then to, to work on their businesses and to balance between the family being at home and they're doing work and they're doing everything. And there's a lot. It can feel like the mind and the body has a lot of pressure coming to, to uh, a person in all directions. There's a lot of overwhelm. So there needs to be a balance between what you do and that feeling fulfilled. And that means finding the balance even within your work so that you can um, focus better, make, make the most of your time and feel content with our choices. Because the minute we choose, we actually um, empower ourselves more. But it's very important to acknowledge pain and grief and loss. This is a hard time on planet Earth. It's not an easy time. And a lot of people are going through through so much. And as I said, personally, having lost a parent to COVID, I truly understand um, that that grieving process. And I, I wasn't able to travel. And uh, my dad passed away in South Africa. I wasn't able to travel for the service. And it was very, very difficult. It still is. So it's very important that um, we also take care of our own innate needs and, and take that necessary time to self-soothe and for self-care and to, um, to, to, again, to self-soothe our nervous systems, which are in overdrive a lot during this period of stress and of anxiety. And I think, um, I think this year I was told, and you may agree with this or maybe not, but um, as an entrepreneur, we're all over the place, right? We're at one every day. It's different. We ch we change our schedule all the time because it, things come up and and situations and so forth. And so I was told today, um, not today, but you know, this past couple of weeks, that I need to schedule time for myself. Meaning, in that time, I will do whatever I want to do, and it's time for me, nobody else but me. And so I started doing it, Cheryl, and. Let me tell you that it's been transformational. And I went back to meditation. I used to meditate in the morning and at night. And now I'm doing it again and just, just stretching, doing little workouts here and there, whatever I can. And that time for myself, though, it has made such a shift into my mind. It, it has cleared it. It has it lets me think. I know it sounds a little off, but I, I'm able to do things that I couldn't do before because I was too much on my way. I was trying to do too much. And just that second, if it's 15 minutes, if it's 30 minutes, that makes a difference. That makes a huge difference. And it's and I like to be by myself. I like my peace. I, I like my time. And I'm not surrounded by people. That's like my time. That's my time to do whatever I want to do. If I don't want to do anything that day, then I don't do anything. If I just want to sit down and watch a, a a little show then I'll just that's my time that's what it is and and I and I think that uh, this is a time for people to just start doing something that they really enjoy once a day and that to take it a day by day and that eventually things will get back to some kind of normal but to to not forget about our own feelings right we're always trying to take care of everybody else so important. I'm so glad that you said that, and and uh, and well done for scheduling in the time. The it, that's a fantastic strategy, by the way, to actually schedule in time to do the things that you want to do. That you don't neglect yourself in the whole uh, process of doing for everybody else. Because at the end of the day, real creativity and profitable ideas and uh, real inspiration. If you look at the word inspiration, it comes from in spirit, takes place in a relaxed body. Healing, maintenance, repair, it takes place in a relaxed body. So it's really important to schedule in that time to make that time so that you can rest and replenish and get more creative. Like you said, get more clear. 
clarity. You get more focus and clarity is power at the end of the day. So we shouldn't underestimate uh, uh, taking care of our health and of our well-being at the end of the day. I love this analogy. I'll share with you an analogy that I always use of managing a balanced bank account. So you can make enough deposits to prevent it, the bank account from becoming overdrawn. And the penalty for being overdrawn will be stress and anxiety and uncertainty and worry and less focus and less efficiency. And the more deposits that you actually make from being aligned with yourself and your innate needs like sleep, eating healthy, exercise and rest to replenish and rejuvenate your, your mind and your body, that's when you'll find that, uh, that you're kind of um, in, in a balanced state of, of body and mind. And here's what I've learned over time, that uh, the most balanced approach for living a more stress-free life is moderation. It's moderation. So it comes back down to the importance of establishing boundaries for yourself, both in your, in your, in your home life, in your work life. So really scheduling in and becoming aware again. Um, if you the type of person that gets stressed out if you don't check your work email throughout the evening and on weekends, and then you, you also get stressed out when you do check the emails, <laughs> then that's, that's a signal, that's a red light saying it's time for some healthy boundaries to be put into place. And that's going to help you um, feel better, feel more uplifted in your personal and in your professional life. It will lead you to a healthier state of mind. So I think it's important to, to establish some sort of a, a boundary for yourself um, in life, at home and at work and within your relationships, working around those healthy boundaries and uh, definitely making that specific time to schedule in that time to do the things that light you up, that um, help you to relax so that you can tap back into the creativity and into the uplift things that uplift you. You know, I, I tell people uh, to, to make a nourishment inventory. What do I mean by that? What are things that you enjoy doing? Some people will say, well, I enjoy going for a walk. You said, I enjoy doing a little bit of meditation. So what things do you enjoy? And then how often are you doing them? Can you do them more? So often we just don't do the, the little things that can make all the difference for us. Absolutely. And I think you had a key factor there is um, you got to pace yourself, right? I think it is okay to sometimes say no to people when you can't do certain things. I think I think uh, we should uh, start as a culture and as people as understanding that we're not alone. If certain, if someone so can do, you know, what somebody else is asking me, you know what, I can't at the moment, but I think I have somebody that can help you with that. You know, that's their speciality. That is what they do. That is what they're known for. And I think it's important to utilize that, that we can't do everything and it is okay. And as a woman, I just want to emphasize this. As women, we tend to be Wonder Womans and want to do everything for everybody, especially if you have kids and you have family members, you feel like you can't say no to them. It is okay to sometimes say no and be a little selfish for your own health because Remember, ladies, those that are mothers and entrepreneurs out there, with, without you, there's no team, there's no family, there's no nothing. So you got to take care of yourself, especially during this time. That way you can keep taking care of your family. That way you can keep taking care of your business and so forth. And so, uh, Cheryl, please tell us a, a wonderful tip that you use like on a daily basis to keep yourself sane because you are like the most calm person I have ever <laughs> met and you have such grace with yourself and you can tell that you are at peace with yourself in, in many ways and so I just I just want to know what, what what is it what is it that you do to to get you where you are today I've, I've learned over time through my own life adversity, my um, relationship with uncertainty was very challenged. Um, I'm a survivor of the 2004 Asian tsunami and it was a, a traumatic life-changing event that changed the trajectory of my outlook on life from that point forward. And I learned that things can change in an instant 
So every day I try to bring all of myself, wherever I am, I bring 100% of who I am. And I have learned, instead of bracing for the next thing to happen, I relax into uncertainty. Instead of stressing into life, I have learned to relax into life. And one of the things that I do to help myself do this is I practice breathing exercises. Breathing is the cornerstone of stress management. And when we bring our attention to the way that we breathe, conscious breathing, just a full and complete inhale and exhale can really bring the body into the parasympathetic uh, state, into the relaxed state in just a couple of seconds. So it's really important to bring your attention to the way that we breathe because our emotions and our breathing are closely connected. So I'm very conscious of the way that I, that I breathe and I begin my day most of my days, there are days that I skip, but most of my days I like to begin with breathing exercises and I go into my, my meditation and creative journaling. I love to journal, just to journal out my feelings, just to journal out my goals. It really sets me up for a, a, a more nourished day of being able to respond, able to respond to what life brings me at any given point in time instead of to react. Oh, wonderful. I love that. I, I'm really going to share that and take that with me for 2021. I, I'm, I'm beyond excited that you have been here with us, Cheryl, and you have definitely given us some valuable information and how to how to be able to cope with uh, stress and, and, and turn it around into something positive. And by the way, I just want to point out, I love your crystal. Your amethyst is beautiful. It's huge. And, uh, you know, I think if I had one of those next to me too, I would be extra happy as well. But I oh, think thank you. The, the the crystal energy is is um, is a very calming energy, and the amethyst is a, a violet variety of the quartz crystal, and it does bring a tranquility and energy of tranquility along with it. I used to when I was younger. I used to put one uh, one little amethyst my mom gave me. It was small, and I would put it under my pillow. And believe it or not, I started sleeping. I know I don't know if it's something like mine, something that the mind was playing, but it was just very peaceful and calming, and and I was finally able to sleep. But um, yeah, I, I definitely believe in all that, and so and I am a crystal too. So and you are a crystal, and uh, as we were discussing earlier, absolutely, you are a beautiful healer. So uh, that's that's you know you've got the most magnificent name, and and crystals are beautiful. Oh, you're way too nice, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl from Israel. I appreciate you being here. And I want to uh, thank all our sponsors, Attorney King. Um, thank you for everything that you do. Indian Motorcycle. I mean, I cannot wait to see your new motorcycles for this season. Um, also, the gym with George Jackson. Uh, I mean, we we're just talking about working out. This is the time to work out even more than what you were working out before. <laughs> and I remember... I want to thank everybody and remember that filling in the gaps in the marketing world is what I do. And uh, we are here at Attorney King Studios uh, with IQ Podcast in Coronado. And God bless and I'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.